Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Starko here, guys. Today we are going to do a full uniform review of the Punisher uniform Marvel Legacy. So, first of all, guys, let's take a quick look at the uniform here. Um, um, uniform list, there we go. So, uniform bonus applied to self, decrease all damage received by 15%. Eh, it's not bad, it's not good either, it's just a little slight damage reduction might be good for uh, him because he was taking a lot to <laughs> a lot of damage so it's gonna help him a little bit but nothing really special about this uniform bonus in my opinion. Then we have six skill change. Um, you know Punisher used to be m mostly melee mixed with a range attack uh, before today but now with this uniform, he is fully range attacker, guys, with a kind of a one melee attack that is full ivory. Um, yesterday, I was actually, um, you know, reading feedbacks about him. People were saying this uniform is trash, blah, 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 blah. So I said, fuck it, let's try it. I try him against Thanos Infinity, and I could clear Thanos Infinity with him without any problem. So. Uh, obviously people who said that he, this uniform is trash obviously don't know how to play him not saying this uniform is going to be a meta uniform guys but this uniform actually make Punisher a lot more viable than it used to be so the skill changes guys um, well the only one that we're really going to pay attention guys here is the third skill here is uh, Punish Guilty uh, apply to self guards it against eight hits for four seconds with a 4.5 second cooldown. So basically, your guard hits is up at all times. So it is very strong. Then you get the tier one passive that apply to self decrease kill cooldown by 10%. So basically, on this character, you only need 40% skill cooldown. Now, does it show on the stat sheet or it doesn't? I do believe it shows on the stat sheet because the way I build them, we'll see it in a few minutes, guys. Um, it looks like I do not have 50% skill cooldown, but uh, my stat sheets show 50%. So this is actually very useful because uh, a lot of people are having, uh, you know, don't have the perfect card set up and all that shit. Uh, don't have, uh, don't want to go for Akai's uh, easel set, so they end up with less. Uh, sorry, skill cooldown they actually need, but that passive actually help them a lot. And you know, you don't actually want to put uh, Yuru on a character like that because he is not a meta in any sort of way. So uh, if you can avoid putting Yuru and having max skill cooldown, it is awesome. Then you have the fourth skill. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's either the fourth skill or the fifth skills. One of them is a full iframe skills. We're gonna see that in a sec, guys. I'm just not sure anymore. I, I only play in mounts with the uniform, so. Uh, but we'll see that in the gameplay pretty soon, guys. So before we actually jump to the gameplay, we're gonna take a quick look at my setup on my finisher to see where we're coming from. Uh, also, guys, uh, the first team we're gonna play with is Bullseye Lead because I need the Ignore Dutch to face uh, Story Mode 12.1.1. Then when we kill, when we go against wall bus, we're going to use this team here with a Spider-Man and a Rhino. So let's take a look at the stats here. Well, at first, costume gear. Costume gear, we're going to be running with critical damage gear and um, a shield cross. Not optimal, but I don't want to waste resources on uh, optimizing this obelisk for a character that is not going to be a character's I'm going to play often. Pretty much just going to be characters for uh, Shadow Land when I feel like it and Alliant Conquest. Uh, Easel set, we are running with Power of the Angry Oak, stage 5. So we don't get the full stats, we get 7.7% all attack, 6.9% attack speed, 7.7% all defense, critical rate 7.7. .7 and in your defense 7.3 and we get a 20% increase of all attack 
on a 60 second cooldown. So that's what we get so far with this ESO set. Now the skills, uh, tier 2 passive for Punisher is applied to self, 15% um, uh, in your dodge and in your target dodge rate by 35%. So uh, yes, even if you already has 35% in your dodge, when you run chapter 12, you still want to be around 50%. So that's why we are going to go with bullseye still. But uh, it really helps with uh, is in your defense. Basically, you only need 35% in your defense on him, which is great. Uh, first skills, nothing special. It's a ranged skill. Second skill is the same. Uh, third skill is a guardian skill. Uh, really useful. Then uh, you have the fourth skill. I'm really sure the fourth skill is actually the uh, uh, the iframe skill. Then you have the fifth skill. And as leadership is actually a decent leadership, 24% increase of all attack. So it's not a bad leadership, pretty decent. Um, nothing special on the other skills though. No buff, unless and except the third skill that gives guards it. All the other skills guys do not do any CC or any sort. So uh, I think that's the one thing that the finisher is going to be lacking overall. Um, stat sheet here guys, we are running with 50% cooldown reduction, 50% in your defense, 200% critical damage, 36% critical rate, and 128% attack speed. So that's pretty much what my uh, Punisher Hill build like. So first guys, we're going to run him through uh, the mission 12-1. Uh, basically what we want to look at here with that mission 12-1, if does a finisher can survive uh, fighting an actual fight and how fast can he actually clear uh, on autoplay average um, damage output characters will pull out between 1 minute 30 and 2 minutes so that's actually the target range we want to be in. see that's the fourth skill here that was the fourth skill that is for high frame um, we use the third skill here for the guard so we actually use it uh, at the third skill in the priority list, so that's actually not that bad. You will use five um, main skill. Well, sorry guys, I'm bobbling a little bit. The priority on this priority list from the AI play in PVE, it's going to be five, four, three. Those are the three skills he's going to be using, and since the cooldown are pretty low on those skills, um, it's actually going to only need to use those three skills because uh, as soon as one of the skills one of the three skills is done the other skill is ready so that's pretty useful and uh, when you fight uh, something like uh, Thanos Infinity you know what you want to do it's like you only use four and three and you fight around so that's pretty much it and we can see here guys we are actually about to die so I'm going to tag out just to get uh, some healing done, uh, so <laughs> don't die. So survivability wise, uh, Punisher is still crap on autoplay because he doesn't have the fucking clue what he's doing. But if you actually play him mildly and then finish this shit man, I guess because um, I actually don't want to spend all night here and die. But on, on AI play, this character is pretty shitty. Uh, I don't actually see him being useful in anything but uh, Shadow Land, in my opinion, and some weak in uh, Alliance Conquest because damage output is there. He has average damage output, but the, uh, the AI play is pretty terrible. Maybe in uh, Alliance Conquest, he does better than that. Um, <clears throat> with uh, maybe the skill rotation is going to be different from the AI play. Uh, actually, it will need to have his third skill on the top of the priority list to actually be viable on auto play for survivability. But his survivability is terrible on auto play, guys. Let's be clear about that. Uh, next thing we're going to run, guys, we are going to go run a wall boss with him. Um, let's get. Their challenge, wall bus, 
today is Quicksilver. That's actually going to be interesting. Can we actually survive Quicksilver with the Punisher? Like you can see here, guys, I'm not trying to uh, make my Punisher shine. I'm just going with why I regular, why I normally do with the characters I'm testing, and see how he actually does because that's what we want to know. We want to know if he's good, if he's bad, if he's terrible. You know, that's what we want to know. So we're going to give him some extra ignore touch, or we're going to be putting him uh, 40 plus 35 percent, so 75 percent ignore dodge which will be enough for him here uh, obviously guys uh, I will recommend to put uh, immunity guard break and invincibility obelisk on him because that's what is going to be benefit him will benefit him the most because uh, you don't want his sport skill to be uh, cancelled and you want him to be able to have some uh, extra survival ability to be honest he's actually doing Really good here. The damage output is actually really very very good. I think he's going to be a real beast in shallow land uh, because when you manual play him, you can actually make him survive a lot. So I'm really satisfied about that. Look at this shit. And it's over here. Well, almost. Come on. Almost had it here. There we go. So 31 seconds to actually kill Quicksilver World Boss. Uh, you know, without Coulson, without a Valkyrie team up, uh, with only 24% all attack leadership, I think that is pretty great. If we actually set him up with uh, his lead, with both team up, Coulson and Valkyrie here, I think that he could actually beat that uh, World Boss in between 15 and 20 seconds, which is really fast to beat uh, Quicksilver. So damage output guys, I am really satisfied with what I've been seeing from Punisher so far. Like I said earlier, what really worries me about this characters with his uniform is his survivability in uh, AI play like in Hong Kong Quest, Story Mode, Timeline, all that shit. And next we're gonna see what he can actually do here. Um, we're gonna pop uh, what team are we going to give it? We're going to give him a better team this time. So what I'm thinking about is giving him a real strong team. And we're going to try to respect the... Uh, the this shit, uh, how you call it? Uh, the co-op mission. So we don't use any blast character. So what we're going to use is a she all lead with Punisher and Valkyrie. So... We're going to see how much you will do in the DPS race. Basically, what we're looking at is to have at least a minimum of 10, uh, 10,000 damage per second in, uh, at the end. So that's what we're looking at for being average characters. Anything higher than that is going to be great. And now we're fighting a Thanos Infinity here. Hopefully, we'll have time to actually throw a few attacks or we won't really be able to see what's going on. And Sharon Rogers, that's going to be interesting. So we're trying to switch really fast here. Sorry, I'm not talking guys, I'm just trying to really get this shit done. <laughs> trying to win the damage, which will surprise me, but we never know. And we actually won the damage here, guys. That was crazy. Beat Thanos, Infinity, and Sharon Rogers. That was really, really, really great. So we did 1 million, uh, 1.4 million in 17 seconds. So that's almost, guys, 100,000 damage per second, which is really, really great. I think that this character, um, I can actually build him for... Uh, as a free to play, uh, um, well, Alliance Battle Extreme for combat, um, combat hero. I think he will actually be viable with all the iframe and the guard hit with the snare resist. His damage output is really, really great. So, overall, guys, um, good characters for uh, manual control uh, gameplay. So, like Alliance Battle Extreme for free to play player. 
uh, that doesn't have Wolverine, obviously, or build Wolverine for PvP. Then a good, a very good character is for Shallow Land because if you play him properly, uh, he is unkillable with a really, really good damage output. Also, is he could be um, decent in Island Conquest if you build him with uh, Immune to Guard Break and Invincibility uh, Oilist. So he's not bad characters. Obviously, is the worst uniform of the update, but he is not trash. Uh, if people say they are tr he is trash, it's because they didn't test him properly. Uh, they just trust him, test him in the training center, what the fuck it's called. Uh, uh, so that's why I test characters in real life because I want to see what they actually do. So very strong gun against wall bust, really fast clear. So my opinion about this uniform guys is yes it is worth getting um, if you are looking for a good characters to you know if you're a fan of Punisher if you want a characters to uh, clear shallow and easy if you're a free to play player that needs something for combat hero alliance battle extreme um, it's actually a, a pretty decent character for that obviously guys when um, Alliance Palo Extreme Combat Hero will be here. I'll be testing him a little bit, you know, to see uh, what can he actually do, can he survive, and all that shit. So, guys, um, let me know what you think of this character. Um, like, don't say that he is trash. Uh, we already know that he is trash on AI play, guys. So, <laughs> but still, let me know what you think. If you love it, if you hate him, um, I mean, I kind of like him. I think he it looks cool. Uh, his kill animation are pretty cool, and uh, his uh, design, his artwork is a lot, a lot better than the uh, Falcon artwork. To be honest, the Falcon art artwork is so fucking plain <laughs> compared to him. On that, guys, uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this video was helpful. Um, don't forget to sub, like, and share, and I will see you in the next video, guys.